Hi, this is John Masalia from the Truth Council, and you're watching Local Band Smoke Out. Ladies and gentlemen, Chad of For the yeah, Fallen Drive! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir, so much for joining, man. I, I appreciate you uh, not only for all the music you, you've given us over the years, but for also just uh, giving us your time, dude. I got to catch, hey, the, brother. I got to catch the show with, with Varsity and Monuments, and it was fantastic. Um, Brad. I'd like to start there. Uh, how was the tour? Tour is great, man. Um, all the Monuments guys are, are, are some of the nicest uh, folks we've had the pleasure of, of touring with. You know, we've been at it a long time. Uh, so you, you never know. You always go into these things blind sometimes because um, it's either old disgruntled guys like us who have been around forever and don't talk much to anybody. They kind of keep to themselves. Or you get the young bucks who are, you know, a little little too uh, tight in their britches and they don't they don't want to talk or hang out. And, and us being older, you know, we kind of carry that stigma around with us that we're going to be the grumpy guys. But um They've been around forever. Monuments Boys have been around forever. So it was cool to, uh, you know, jump in with a bunch of uh, guys who have been around for almost 20 years as well. Just just some of the nicest uh, guys we've ever had the pleasure of touring with. So uh, hats off to them for, for being uh, great headliners and super easy to tour with. The Var City guys, we've toured with them now twice. So great boys. Love those guys to death as well. So it, it was a fun little package, man. Everybody was was social everyone enjoyed the time you know it wasn't a long run it was a little over three weeks so everybody just enjoyed uh, the quick little rip that we had any any pranks that you guys do while on the road or that you can recall uh this this one um uh, <laughs> joey and uh, the last show it was in brooklyn and joey uh joe is like uh, every every night i kind of do like a little spiel of of again why we're the uh, the old guys now and it's kind of funny. Um, and and Joey was like, "Hey, man, you know, like when 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 For the Fallen Dreams gets up here and Chad does his spiel of how everybody in the room is old as fuck now, I want you to boo him." Um, so so I really played into that on that last show in Brooklyn. I kept having people. I was like, you know, continue to boo me. Let's let's lean into it. You know, and, and why Valor City was wrapping up their last song. Uh, the guys in Monuments and the rest of my crew, they all went up there and started taking the drums down mid-song. <laughs> it, it, no, nothing too wild like when, like how it used to be. Pranks in the in the early years, man, used to be way more intense uh, than they are now. I, I feel like everyone's kind of lightened up a little bit. But, man, I remember when, um, you know, we would go out, we would do these tours, and, and it was like, standardized that if you were on tour it was the end of the tour prank you get guys that would have their entire vans you know covered in mustard and ketchup and then saran wrapped and it's it's not like it used to be. i've never even heard of that one that sounds terrible <laughs> that sounds messy that's a lot of ketchup too or mustard but uh a lot of ketchup, do you uh do you have a, a particular song in your this is completely uh off guard of what we just talked about but do you have a oh, good, particular man. song in your catalog you guys what seven studio albums now seven albums this this past uh self-titled release was our, our seven studio album so is there is there a song that may not be as popular to a, the average fan that just resonates with you more than another one and why um well i mean i i guess you're always biased to your own stuff so i feel like a, a few of the songs on the new record deserve so much more love than they've gotten and it's it's some of the best stuff i've ever written uh some of the most confident material i've ever produced and i think the band as well i think we kind of like some of these songs like the song searching um it's kind of a gem in the new album that i don't think people have truly been able to appreciate all that that song is i actually wrote that song like two and a half years ago uh with dl uh from bad wolves and um him and I wrote. Him and have, him and I have always written music together we, in our other band as well, Legend. But we wrote uh, "Searching" like like two and a half years ago, and um, I was I was really excited about it then. So we kind of took it and we moved it into the new album. We kind of revamped it and brought it to life a little bit more to fit the aesthetic of the new the new album. And um, 
man, it's I, I feel like it's a sleeper on the record. I, and I, we're doing some cool stuff with it. So I really hope uh, that that fans are able to pick up on how special that song really is uh, musically, lyrically. Uh, it's a really powerful song, you know, kind of just about the mortality of 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 who we are and what we are as human beings and kind of the uh, the uncertainty of moving into the void of of whatever's after this this little rip that we're on right now. So, um, yeah, man, searching is going to be one of those ones for me. And um, if we want to take it back to old stuff, um, I think. Um, heavy Hearts, the record I the first record that I came back to the band uh, um, in 2013, that record too has a lot of hidden gems on it. So I think that's always worth going back and uh, revisiting. Dream Eater, it's got uh, uh, Garrett from The Color Morale on it, killer song. So we got you lose it with some of the, you start getting the seven albums and you're like shit. Man, yeah, it's so hard. Many. It's hard to make a set list when when it, you can only pick you know six, seven, eight songs and it's like one an album. Oh, especially for touring, man. You know, like we get, we get, we're having even at even at the California show. You know, we've been playing SoCal forever, so having you know people come up like, "Oh man, why don't you all play this or why don't you all play that?" It's like, yeah, that's like seventy some songs, if not more, close to eighty with singles, maybe ninety. Trying to curate like the perfect set to make everybody happy, but um, we do our best, man. I, you know, I was happy with with the set that we we curated for. I was very uh, happy. That, so yeah, yeah. Plus some old stuff. So if you've been around for a while, we got we got that out there too. Did you? I don't know if you're a cannabis user, but at that particular show, I passed you guys a joint. Were you able to partake? Of course, of course. Cool, We're, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, they're, they're all, all the guy, all the guys uh, in the band, um, especially Mark. Mark, uh, he he took a long break. Our drummer Mark, he took a long break from smoking. He was not, you know, he he was off the wagon. And then he got into, we got back into it on these past couple tours, and has really dove in uh, feet first. So, uh, I think that night he, he did something, um, 250 milligrams of edibles, and then he, he smoked the joint that you gave us. <laughs> so he was he was gone. He was he was he was a good there time. for a little bit. It That's was a, a good time. But we appreciate it, man. Oh yeah, my pleasure. Clearly, I can see in the background you are a collector of not only Predator but but hats. Looks like you're a horror fan with the Child's Play uh, yeah. poster in the back. What would you say of your collectibles is like your holy grail when referring to like the Predator collection you have? The Predator collection, man. Um, so that glass case back there is like I have. Um, I think, in just in that case, around fifty some of the the. Uh, wow. The figure, the NECA figures, and some of the collector's editions. As far let's see here, we gotta take a look. The holy grail of what I have for Predator gear is probably one of the original um, McFarlane uh, Predator Two um, figures that came out with the movie. So I have that. That's that's super rad. I have some of the original um, uh, artwork and, and comics. I think I have some, some stuff right here. I got some old. And just handy well, dandy be, right there, too. I, brother, I, it's, my, my studio is just really a collectibles, uh, you know, a, a treasure chest of just everything from the 90s. Like old, old goosebump books. I got 40 some pairs of cowboy boots. I got all my horror stuff. I got it's just, it's really my studio, my little Zen area, but it's just, I collect all my, all my stuff. I'm, I'm a collector of, of many things, my friend. I have so many questions for you, but I'm trying to figure out how to get them out as fast as possible. Um, hey, brother, take your time. I don't know the time frame on this, but I'm I'm here and we're hanging we out. We can so. we can run a little long if if need be. Uh, as as we have a lot of smaller bands that watch the show, hence local band smoke out. Uh, right. Can you can you talk about how being in a band that has had so many band member changes? How do you mm. keep the glue together when a member or two step away? and stay positive and keep grinding yeah i think you know we get this question a lot just because it's exactly that we've had a lot of we've had a lot of guys come in and out of the band and i think that that is for a number of reasons i think one of the reasons is that the band's been around for so long you know we started when we were in high school so you know a lot of the guys who were in the band in the first five years we're talking from 2003 to 2007 or 2008 you know, and, and we have guys and then we started out young, man. 
You know what I mean? Like, so you're having guys in the band that are 18, 19, max 20 years old. And you don't know what you want to do when you're 20 years old. You don't know who you are yet. You're trying to figure it out. That's the whole point. Like, it's like before the fallen dreams college, we had a lot of guys coming in and just kind of figuring out who they were as human beings and what made them tick. Did they want to be on the road eight months out of the year? Did they want to give everything to music? And you kind of, I don't want to use the word weed, weeding them out because I think that's kind of like a negative uh, way to say it, but it, it's, it, if, if that's the way we can use it for the sake of continuing the conversation is you get guys who just aren't really cut out for all that this um, expects from you. A lot of sacrifice, you know, and I, and I think a lot of it has come with the band um, just being ha- having to stick around and certain guys not being able to, to make this tour or that tour. And as the band continues, it's always got to be your key guys. It's it's me and Jim. You know, Jim is is started this band uh, with Andrew Tkachuk from the Ghost Inside in 2003. You know, that's almost well, I mean, it, that's, that's 20 years ago. You know, uh, I joined in 05, um, 18 years ago. And um, and even even I took a dip for a little while to, to kind of figure my shit out, you know, and, and I think that's what makes For the Fallen Dreams so unique is that we've we've been able to kind of go through a lot of guys, but not guys who were so detrimental to the fabric of what this is. And that was me and Jim and Andrew. Andrew had his his handprint on the band, you know, for Changes and Relentless. He came back and wrote some stuff with us for Heavy Hearts. You know, um, I've always been very involved in the writing process. It's, you know, even just being a singer uh, and, and the vocalist, um, I've still been very involved on the imprint of what this band is and the, and the fabric of, of what makes For the Fallen Dreams For the Fallen Dreams. Uh, Jim, obviously, is a huge part of that sound. So I think keeping your core guys, you know, you're going to have dudes who, who are going to, again, kind of use bands as stepping stones. And, and this band has been a great stepping stone for a lot of people. We've had a lot of guys uh, graduate in, into bands that are fucking huge and, and killing it and doing really well. And, and we're proud of all of our uh, uh, FTFD alumni. Um, <laughs> but, 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 you know, for us, it's still that challenge. It's still that how bad do you want it? You know, like how much do you love it? And um, 20 years later, and, and it's still a challenge to go out there every night on tour and, 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 and enjoy it because the second this stops being fun do something else man and and, and i've been uh, lucky enough to still enjoy what it is that i do in this band uh same with jim and, and the crew that we have you know mark our drummer he's been with us now um a little over six years or, or about six years now um all of our guys who are coming in and, and, and being hired guns you know we've kind of for the fallen dreams has taken on this responsibility of bringing in guys who you know, just need a chance, right? Some of these these guys that we have that have filled in for us, you know, they just needed someone to take a chance on them, and they've been some of the best hired guns that we've ever had uh, come through the FTFD camp. So to answer your question, I think it's just got to stay hungry, man. I don't think – I never think that as, as a local band or a smaller band that you should be discouraged as long as you – and as long as you want it bad enough, you'll always find a way to make it happen. You know, I think – it, you're going to go through the, the the waves of finding guys with like minds. And that's where the trickiest part is finding like minds to to kind of tackle this journey um, with you, because that's it's tough. man. It's, it's really tough to go out here and, and kind of everybody have the same mindset of let's find success and still have fun with it. And there's that weird balance of. Yeah, I don't give a shit, but I give a lot of a shit. So it's 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 a weird being a, a band is a weird thing. You, you, so many different personalities, and, but um, you just got to You got you got to keep your head high, man, and work hard. Like anything in life, you know, it doesn't have to be a band, or it can be a job or a promotion that you're working for, or or uh, or, or your family, or whatever it may be. But I, I you have to to want it, and you just got to go out and work hard. And we're still doing that to this day, man. We're still working hard. After working with Rise for so long and then Artery just for a little bit, how did you know that a rising empire was the next best, the next fit for you guys? A rising uh, right off the gate was just very excited. 
and, and that and for me it being in this business as long as we have and we've done we've done the bigger labels you know we've done rise we did rise for a majority of our career most of every everything that i i've put out aside from this last album has been through um rise but um what made us so excited about a rising is that they were excited they were like man like they saw the value in a band like us that's seasoned but in the resurgence like almost you know what we're doing now is different than what we've done before the music is different what we're trying to accomplish and 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 really what we're tying into with this new music is different than anything we've done before so to have a rising just be excited and say hey we're here for it we love it we're, we're down let's make it fucking happen that made us excited and we kind of knew right then and there um that it was it was the right fit Hell yeah! Uh, were you were you prepped on the trivia portion of the show? I I was, but all I had was sriracha, and there's no way I'm taking shots of sriracha. You don't have to do a shot. You don't have to do a <laughs> okay. shot. It's just like a little like whoop, quick swing, or just like a little tap in the mouth to call it a day. Okay. Um, if, if I don't it, have any sriracha on me. We can still do the trivia. Okay. Because if we're talking movie trivia, my friend. The thing is, you. you get to pick it. You get to pick the movie or TV show that you've seen the most. Where if I look at, I'm guessing it probably is going to be Predator. But uh, if if I look this up and I ask you a question and uh, I stump you, whether or not you get it right or wrong, I'm doing hot sauce. But if I stump you, you we ask that the guest takes a swig. But no worries, I see you got a uh, uh, seltzer water there. We'll, <laughs> yeah, the we'll just water. we'll just we'll just call it chugs this round. I'll chug a rolling sure, rock. And, but uh, what movie or go. TV show have you seen the most? Uh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's going to be predator. It's going to be predator. I figured. Okay. Um, do we want to do a different one or? You, well, you... it can be predator one, two, the alien versus predator. It's, it's your call on specifically which one. We're going to go, we're, um, we're going to go OG. We're going to go predator one, which is what? 80, 87, I think, give or take. Seven. Okay. So while, while I'm looking that up, uh, it's going to take me a second to look up a question, but in the meantime, can you walk us through any form of, of vocal warm-ups you do and then post-show, just something to cool down that uh, you could share with us so maybe we could practice that? and Absolutely. Well, the, the beauty of, of being right here in my studio is that I have some of, of some of that stuff right now. So one of the things that I use, and this is a newer thing that I've started using, is, is this thing called uh, Dr. Vox. So what this is, it's it's just a bottle. It's a bottle with two different um, hoses on it. You fill it up, and what it does is, as you blow into this end, it's almost like a it's it's like a gravity bong almost. And as you're blowing into this, it creates back pressure that uses like noise waves to to massage your vocal cords. So it, it opens them up. It gradually, as you're doing like your your regular vocal vocal warm ups. You use this and you fill the water less and less and less, and you'll be using more power uh, to, to use those waves to kind of open up your vocal cords. Um, so I use that to start out at least an hour before I start. I use how long, how long do you use that for? You said an hour before, but how long do you actually do hour. that routine for? I, I, I do an hour of, of warm-ups every, every, every show. So I start an hour before our set time, and I'll, I'll do this. I'll do warm water. Um, I'll take these. These are called uh, little plug uh, vocal zones. So these are like menthol lozenges. There we go. And um, <laughs> it just it helps you keep it. It helps uh, create lubrication uh, in, in your in your voice and in your vocal cords. Uh, it keeps your your voice clear. Kind of gets rid of any any mucus you have. Uh, kind of gives you that extra little just coating over your over your throat. Um, so I, I use those roughly 20 minutes before we go on, just so I kind of have a little extra layer of coating um, and the vocal warm-ups after the set because uh, it's always very demanding and I don't claim to be the most um, critically correct um, with how I scream because I'm so fucking old that I kind of do it the old school way where that's just scream your head off. Right. It's the Corey Taylor tried and true loud as fuck. And that's what I do. So it takes a little bit of extra umph after our set to make sure that I'm winding down. So I'm doing vocal rest 
I try to do vocal rest for at least 20 minutes after our set, but I usually end up talking to people and losing my voice uh, immediately after if, if I if I do that. So I try and take a little bit of time. Um, I'll take these lozenges and I will do the vocal zone again to kind of massage my vocal cords. And then I usually just try and keep it light with with talking for the rest of the night until the next day. Appreciate you sharing that, dude. But yeah, brother. we're going to stump you right now. Here we go. All right. Predator 1. Dutch's team arrives in the helicopter. There is only one member of the team that is wearing a suit and tie when he jumps out of the helicopter. Which team member is that? <laughs> is that Poncho? That is not correct. <laughs> it says it says the answer is Mac. It says Mac's wearing a light brown suit. He jumps out of the helicopter. Everybody else is wearing casual clothes. Cheers. Mac. Okay, cheers, brother. All right, all right, all right. I need. A, I'll look up another one here in a minute. But um, is there is there a place that you have never been country wise as far as playing a show that you still you still have the globe at home and it's still circled and someday we're gonna get there and play there? Australia, man. Why not? Why have you guys ever been to Australia? Uh, the the band when I took a little hiatus from the band, the band went twice. And um, when I came back to the band in 2013, we had uh, an Australian headliner booked. Funny. Uh, the Plot in You was direct support. And Fit for a King was opening the tour. Wow. My how the time, my how times have changed. And um, I was in a motorcycle wreck. And my doctor told me at the time that, because I want to say it was six weeks before the tour, and they said, with flying for that long, uh, I risked um, blood clot, so we had to cancel the tour. So, for whatever reason, it's been now, um, let's see here, that was 2014, nine years. Crazy. So, we have not been since then, and it's it's killing me. And you've never been there, like, just on a personal trip? I've never been there, man, and it's, it's one of my... Um, bucket list spots i have a few friends out there like when we do make it back i'm just gonna uh, i'm gonna fuck off for like a couple weeks after in the bush and just kind of uh go on a walk about and go out in the bush with uh with my buddies and is it my buddy um out there he's a he's a crocodile uh um like uh, he runs uh tours right so you go out and, and so i'm gonna go with him and, and kind of see what's what out there in in uh, in uh, the northern territory and and just enjoy it, man. But it's 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 on the list, and it, and it kills me that we uh, we haven't made it there yet. So fingers crossed here within the next year or so. Every band has a worst show ever. Everything went wrong at this one gig. Do you recall that day, and what went wrong? Oh, there's <laughs> there's, so, there's so many. Um, we'll do a recent one. We'll do a recent one. Um, uh, it was on this on the tour we did this this past spring with Gideon, um, great dudes, and we were doing a one off in uh, uh, Arizona, and Bleeding Through was headlining that one. So it was Bleeding Through, Gideon, us, and then uh, this band called Orthodox and a band called Gorilla Warfare, and uh, killer show, man, packed out. Just you know, you know, you know, we we were stoked. It was it was a really it was the the underground in in Mesa, Arizona. In the big room upstairs, fucking packed. We were stoked. And um, as we're getting, you know, getting everything ready, and you know, the show's running a little late, so we're kind of stressed out a little bit. You know, we're trying to be as quick as we can because we're not headlining. We want to make sure that we keep the show on time. And as a supporting band of that tour, you know, you kind of got to just eat it sometimes. With as far as you know, we're gonna have to cut a song or whatever it may be. So we go up there, and in the first five seconds my in-ears completely go out. I have nothing. And then my mic just starts screaming. Mic don't work, in-ears go out, and my the mic is just feedbacking and screaming. So the band continues to play. I go off side stage. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm popping everything out of checking the batteries. It's not the batteries. My in-ears are toast. Um, after the first song, the guys finish out. We stop. We go over to the side and it takes us almost 10 minutes to get it all sorted out with running a wired mic 
and we had to cut three songs that one of the biggest shows of that tour i want to say was like 650 and uh it was just such a bummer man we were so stoked on that on that show and just everything that could have went wrong that night uh sonically and nothing before or after happened on that tour no issues none so where she goes though man way she goes you gotta stay positive though. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. rough things happen. You just gotta keep it positive. Yeah. I got, I got one more predator for you, and then I got a a, a serious question to end on, and uh, we'll we'll see what you answer for that one. But this is your second predator trivia. In the movie, Dutch tells Dylan to use the radio receiver. What code name does Dylan use when he uses the radio receiver? Hold on, I know this one. Call in, call in position to Connor on the hook. He goes, call in position, call in situation to Connor on the hook. But he says like blank, blank, call into position on the Connor on the hook. He d- uses like a code name before saying what you just said. So that part's right. <laughs> That's not the part I'm looking for. Though. <laughs> right. um, you got me, bro. You got me. Blazer one, he says. Blazer one, and then and then um, Carl Weather says, "Copy again, Blazer one." They're, yeah. We're too far out. Yeah, I, I know they're hard, but if it's it's the movie you've seen the most, they got to be tough. I see all the the action figures and collectibles in the background. So That's cheers, good, man. Cheers That's one more one. time, and then one right final on, serious question. Uh, the most real, honest, excuse me, heartfelt advice you could give to a band that's just starting out in the garage tomorrow. They have not even played a show. Just just a paragraph or two advice of how to handle what the music industry is going to throw at them. The music industry is, is, is a wild place, man. And, um, and I've went through uh this in in multiple different eras of the doubt of do i have what it takes can i make it in this business am i am i enough to to be this guy or that guy and and i think that the best thing i always come back to is is that you don't have to be any certain person but yourself because once you be you man nobody else can be you but you and i think being genuinely yourself and just enjoying it is the biggest thing i think trying to oh this guy does this and this guy looks like this and this guy acts like this i I think that's when we start to lose ourselves and um the one thing that i've i've found that i always come back to that's that's makes me say you know what there's a reason why i'm still here and there's a reason why i'm able to 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 talk to these up and coming bands and and give these types of, of advice is that i've i've found peace in, in who I am as, as a singer and a front man and, and just as a human being. And I think being genuinely you in this business is, is the best advice that I can give. Like it's, it'll chew you up and it'll spit you out. And that's, and that's why it needs to just be fun. First and foremost, you have to enjoy it. I mean, you have to take this stuff seriously. If you want to make this a career and you want to make this and you want to be a band that like goes out and you're like, Hey, I'm able to, to, you know, make enough money each year that I don't have to really bust my ass when I'm home. Um, this is what I want to do. Or if you want to be a rock star, right. You want to be the biggest, you know, rock star in the world. You know, it all comes from being genuinely you and being confident in, in, in just comfortable in your own skin and, um, never, never fall into these, these pitfalls of, um, what people expect you to be, go out there and just be who you are because nobody can be you, but you and being an individual in this business and being genuine and treating people good is what will get you further than anything else. Very sound advice, dude. This is awesome. This is a lot of fun, man. Uh, thanks for all the music you've given us over the years. Always yeah, put brother. on a stellar show. Just being a down to earth, cool cat, man, for real. Hey man, appreciate you. I'm, I'm a little bummed that I, I, I doinked on two two predator questions but it's been fun yeah it's no worries chad you're awesome (laughs) brother we appreciate you stay safe when you head back on the road new record is fantastic please keep giving us awesome music for years and years and years as long as as you're happy doing it like you said but uh enjoy the rest of your evening thank you so much my man appreciate you
Chad for the Fallen yeah, Tribes! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> Cheers, man. Have a good one. Later, brother. See ya. Alright, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band. Smoke out.